Hi everyone, here's part two of the multi-hooping. So for those of you who want to create bigger, larger designs than your hoop, um, this series of multi-hooping videos is very good to help you with that. Now before I go ahead with this video, I do have an announcement to make. I have been running a website for a number of years and I have decided now to just solely focus on YouTube and I will continue with my Facebook page as well. So I'm closing down my website and I will be, um, that will be happening in April when it's due for renewal. So there is time if you want any courses from there to go in and purchase those because all my courses are downloadable so you can go in and purchase it and download the videos and any other materials PDFs or JPEGs that you need to, to complete the course. Um, and because I'm closing down I've got a special on at the moment for half price so 50% off anything you purchase and all you need to do is enter the words half price in the checkout. I'll make a note of that in the description below. So, um, and along with the link to my web to the actual page of my um, products on my website. Okay, so the other announcement I have to make is because I'm now concentrating on YouTube and I've had such good support here, um, I'm now eligible to accept donations. So under each video you'll see a donation button now. So if you think that you're getting good value for money for good value out of my videos and you are able to contribute to help me continue making these, there is a donate button and a small donation would be appreciated, but not essential. There is some upcoming news about what other thing, features I'm going to do on the YouTube channel, but I'll announce those later. Okay, back to this video. So in the last part one, I opened this design as an example. And when I went to the multi-hooping, I said, oh, the software has automatically split the design. I wasn't strictly accurate with that comment. Um, the design I chose is for the mega hoop, which is Benina's mega hoop. And that is a three position hoop. So this design is already split before you, so you can use the mega hoop and embroider this out without any alterations whatsoever because it's already split into the sections for the mega hoop. So if I go out of true view and we zoom in here where, where the split is, if I can find it now, um, ah, here we go. So you can see here, I'm showing my connectors. So this design ends here. Where does it start? I think it might even be easier if I go down the, well, if I just click on it to select it. So I'll get my select tool and I'll click on this section here. That's, there we go. So that is one section, one object. So you can see that it's already split here. So that's why it was already split in the multi-hooping area um, in the previous video. You can see there's no overlap here um, because with a three position hoop, you're not re-hooping the fabric so it's not going to move. So you can um, happily continue on stitching. However, if you have to actually re-hoop with um, a smaller hoop, then you have to be very accurate so you don't get any gaps here. So I'm going to demonstrate um, a little process you can do if you haven't got a design that's already split. So I've recreated this shape or part of it so that it's larger than the hoop I'm using. And so I'll go through to that design now. So here is the shape and I've put in the Burnett Deco hoop here. I think it's... Um, what is it? All right, click on here to find out. 140 by 200, this hoop. Um, but you can see here that this shape doesn't fit into the hoop. When I go to multi hooping,
I've got some options here that I mentioned before and you can see that the actual shape is black. If it's black that means it won't fit in the hoop. So whatever design you've got, if you've got areas of it that are black they're not inside the hoop and therefore you need to do something about it. Now the quickest and easiest way as I mentioned in the previous video was to automatically add hoops. So if I left click on the automatically add hoops button I will get a second hooping and it will tell me that it's going to result in two hoopings so I can go OK. And you can see this pink line here. So when you automatically add hoops, the software does automatically split the design. So if I just go back, I'll undo all of that and go back to the design. You can just click on anything to um, get back to your um, actual digitizing workspace. You can see this is one object. If I click on the color film to go to color blocks, it's one object. If I click on the individual object, it's one object. So when I go to multi-hooping and I automatically add the hoops, even though that's happened here and that split is there, if you zoom in, it still looks like one object. The, it doesn't actually split the design till you export it. So once you've got your design ready, you would then go file. Well, it's always a good idea to save it as it is. Um, I'm not going to do that now, but you should always keep a, a, a Benina art file saved so you can go back and edit if you need to. Um, but when you're ready to send it to your machine, you need to export a machine file. And if I left click on that, then I will come up with where I want to export it to. I'm just going to put it on the desktop for the moment. And I want it to be exported as an EXP. So you can export it in any of the different machine formats depending on your machine. Um, and then you click on Save. And it'll come up with this little dialog. And it's asking you, do you want to export one file for every hooping, show me first, or export everything in one file? I'm not sure why you would do that except for a multi-position hoop. Um, you would do um, line up your um, different stitch areas for your multi-position hoop and then you would still want it all in one file. Some of the machines with the multi-hoops will split the design if it's not already split when you load your um, design in, if provided you've got the multi-hoop, uh, multi-position hoop selected in your machine. But if you don't have a machine like that and you need to do all this manually, then you will want to export one file for every hooping if you haven't got a multi-position hoop. So we're going to click yes. And it will show you first. So on the left hand side here we've got the first hooping is the bottom part of this paisley and the second hooping is the top half and we can save or save all. So you want to save all because you want if you just click save it'll only save the highlighted hooping. If you click save all it will say every one. Um, you can see these little registration marks here that are on the design this is these will stitch at the end of the design and then when you go to your next hooping before you start it so you'll stitch your first design on your stabilizer then remove it from the hoop remove as much of the stabilizer as you can be careful around the little registration marks because they do pull out easily you might want to just cut the stabilizer um, around those and leave it in place so they don't get pulled out. Then you'll hoop up some stabilizer only and you will start the second hooping which is this one and it will stitch these two registration marks. You will then lay your first embroidery over the top and put a pin through the previous registration marks on this, this first one and then put those, make sure that pin goes through the center of the 
registration marks on your stabiliser. That will help align your fabric in your second hooping. And then you can, um, obviously you're not, you've hooked up the stabiliser, so you need to attach your fabric to your stabiliser some, in some way, either by pinning or taping or whatever you need to do to get it to stay in position. Of course, remove any pins that are anywhere near where an embroidery will be. And then you will stitch this second part and it should line up pretty well. Now, of course, we all know that fabric moves, um, it distorts with the stitching, etc. So I'm not really keen to just allow the, the software to just create a cut through the design and hope that it's going to match up absolutely perfectly. So I like to cheat a little bit and create a little bit of an overlap um, where I need to meet up so that if the, the um, fabric moves or you're not quite lined up, you've got a little bit of leeway. So you can do that. I'm going to close this. So I'm not actually going to export the files, but they'll export two files XP files which you can then load into your machine. I'll close that and I'll undo so that I've just got one hoop again now. Right, so if you go to multi hooping, oh sorry, that's the multi hooping options. I'm in multi hooping already. You can add a hoop manually and you've got all these other options for adding different hoops but let's just add one more hoop because that's all we need you can see this is black again because it doesn't fit in the hoop it has added another hoop exactly on top of the old one if i left click on the hoop and drag i can move it and you can line it up exactly if you want to it's entirely up to you um, but you can see here it's still black because it's not split yet so when you add your manual hoop, um, it will not automatically split. You have got a knife in here, so add a splitting line, and you can do that. So that gives you more control over exactly where the split is in your object. So that's your first starting point. But I like to actually, once I've added the hoop, go back to the digitizing screen, and it will show I'm now back in the um, embroidery canvas and it's showing both hoopings. So I can see that I need to split the design somewhere in the portion that is overlapped by the two hoops. So it's a good idea to give yourself plenty of room if you can by having a nice big overlap. You can choose where you position your hoop so you can position it so that you've got a nice big overlap. And then in your edit toolbox you have your knife tool. So you can grab that and you can manually put your split. Now this is just a, a satin outline. I wouldn't split an object that was solid and fill, or you know, if I had an object, if this was filled with solid um, stitching, I wouldn't try and multi hoop that because you're never going to get a nice invisible join across a big solid fill like this. But outlines, satin outlines are uh, reasonably okay. So I'm going to put my split through here. So I'm going to left click and left click and split the design there and enter. And now you can see I've got two separate objects. I can get my select tool and click off so nothing's selected and select the first object and it's split here and here, where exactly where I put that split line. And if I click on the second object, you'll see the two separate objects there. So if I go through to multi-hooping now, it's green because all the objects are covered by a hoop. So the top half is covered by this hoop and the bottom half is covered by that hoop because of I, it was split through here, but I did it manually. Now, um, I just wanted to show you that there's no need to go back there just yet. So I'll go back to the digitizing art canvas. 
and now I can do a little bit of reshaping to create an overlap there for myself. So I'll click, click on the top one and I'm going to go to the reshape tool and zoom in. Now as you can see there are nodes around where this object was created. A round node is a curved node, a square node is, is a change direction or a straight line node. So it's change direction in this instance because we've got kind of like a scalloped edge. The last node is this yellow one here so don't confuse it with these little handles, orange handles either side. You've just got the one node in, a, in an outline um, an object. So you can just grab that node and I'm just going to pull it down a little bit into the other area. And I'm just following that centre line of the other area to keep that curve nice and let go. And you can see now I've got a bit of overlap there. If I actually select the, the object and zoom in, you can see the other object underneath, the darker line, and then the pink line of the selected object coming over the top. Okay, go back to reshape and I'll go over, I want a pan, I'll get my pan which is you can either press P on your keyboard or grab your hand and pan across to the other side and I'm looking for the last node there, there it is so I will go back to my select tool, uh, sorry my reshape tool and grab that node and do the same thing on this side, just overlap it ever so slightly. Okay, now I can go back to multi-hooping and export those two um, designs. And I've got that little bit of leeway and overlap, so I shouldn't have any gaps. I'm going to make one more video on multi-hooping, which just gives you a, a bit more um, information about the options, etc. And I'll do that as soon as I can. In the meantime, happy digitizing. Um, there's lots more to come, so stay tuned, stay subscribed, turn on the bell notifications, and um, hopefully we'll see lots more of you.